Here's today's first word daily devotion. On March the 14th, we turn to Numbers 10 and 11, and that's where we'll spend most of our time today, though I don't want to look over our New Testament reading. Our New Testament reading is so important. It's the announcement of the birth of Jesus from Gabriel to Mary. But anyway, let's turn to Numbers chapter 10. And if you remember yesterday's reading, it was a, a peaceful time. But today's reading, we begin a section in the wilderness of challenge as well as conflict. Look what happens here. Look at verse 8. The sons of Aaron, the priest, shall blow the trumpets. The trumpets shall be to you. Look at this language, a perpetual statute throughout your generations. So in other words, what God is putting into place, he intends for what's put into place to stand forever. And remember, this is important for us too. He is building a people for himself. He is creating through his word. That's why we have all of these um, marks of distinction that he gives through laws and regulations. He is creating a people by his word. And so we have this language here in um, and in verse 11, the cloud lifted over the tabernacle of the testimony and the people of Israel set out by stages from the wilderness of Sinai. The cloud settled down in the wilderness of Paran. They set out for the first time at the command of the Lord by Moses. So in other words, when the cloud that is the representative of the presence of the Lord, when the cloud moved, they moved. And the Lord is leading them. This is important for us even if he leads them deeper into the wilderness. It's in the wilderness that they will continue to learn about his ways and God will continue to form in them. But I guess we should say more in, more specifically or more fully, continue to form in us what is necessary to know him and to walk with him. Remember, this is uh, Paul's language. He said that what happened to them happened uh, to them for our sake so that we would learn to be a particular type of people. He said that in 1 Corinthians. But look at this challenge here that comes in verse 29. Moses said to Hadab, the son of Ruel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we are setting out for the place of which the Lord said, I will give to you. And then Moses invites him. He says, come with us and we will do good for you or to you. For the Lord has promised good to Israel. But he said to him, I will not go I will not depart from to my own land. I will depart to my own land and to my kindred. And Moses said, Please don't leave us, for you know where we should camp in the wilderness, and you will serve as eyes for us. If you do, uh, if you do go with us, whatever good the Lord will do to us, the same we will do to you. So in other words, here's the first challenge. Uh, for Moses, he can either, the challenge is you can either stay comfortable or you can go with God's presence. And of course, this unfortunate, uh, uh, his unfortunate brother-in-law here chooses not to go with him. And that's a mark for us to remember that we can either go with the Lord wherever he leads us, or we can stay in sometimes com in a comfortable place. But here's what we need to know. And this is a lesson for us right on the front end. The most challenging place the most difficult place is the most rewarding place if we're following the presence of the Lord. Now, let me mark this for you too. Look at verse 33 again. I want to mark these every time I see them. If I miss one, please let me know by writing us at info at fbcstarkville.com. But anyway, here is this three days journey. Here again, we have three days. And then look at what happens here in verse 4 of chapter 11. I want you to notice this. Now the rabble that was among them had a strong craving. And the people of Israel wept again and said, Oh, that we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt the co that cost nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, the garlic. Is anyone getting hungry yet? But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing but all this manna to look at. <laughs> it's interesting how the Bible calls them. Again, this is God's perspective. That's why we have the inerrant Word of God. We have the authoritative Word of God, this inspired Word, this uh, revelation that we have. These individuals are rabble amongst them with a strong craving. But notice 
what they forget. Here's what they remember. They remember the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the fish and all of these things. But look at what they forget. They forget God's salvation. They forget the fact that they were slaves. And so remember this. Uh, God is interested in our hearts. He wants us to follow after him. His desire for us is to uh, have a heart that remembers him, that is formed by his salvation. And so look at what happens here. And there's a lot of details that we're having to overlook, but uh, I hope that you'll pay attention to them. Look at what happens in verse 31. Then a wind from the Lord sprang up and brought quail from the sea and let them fall beside the camp. Now skip down to verse 32. Those who gathered at least gathered 10 omers and they spread them out for themselves all around the camp. Now they're gathering there. The details are that uh, they're greedy. They're taking more than they should. And look at what the Lord does. While the meat was yet between their teeth, verse 33, before it was consumed, the anger of the Lord was kindled against the people and the Lord struck down the people with a very great plague. Now remember this, God is forming a people who worship. He's forming a peculiar people who respond appropriately to him. And greed is never the appropriate way to respond to him. Uh, notice this Hebrew here, just to point out the, the uh, uh, footnote three, kibroth hatava, that means graves of craving. Interesting, the Bible. I love the Hebrew here. Let's close today with Psalm 68, verse 19 and 20, and then we'll close with Proverbs 12. In light of what we just read, blessed be the Lord who daily bears us up. God is our salvation. Our God is a God of salvation, and to God the Lord belong deliverance from death. Aren't you glad? Let's remember this in light of our reading, Proverbs 12, verse 2. A good man obtains favor from the Lord, but a man of evil devices he condemns. No one is established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous will never be moved.